Hey everybody, it's Matt with Matthew's Video, and today we're doing the long-awaited review of a movie that I have talked about in the making for so long. It's a tale as old as time, it is Beauty and the Beast. Now I have made this video three times now. Because of syncing issues, my voice and the video did not come together. Why does that happen so often to me? Anyway, um... This is a movie I've been looking forward to for so long. I've done two trailer reviews on it. I've been pumped for this for the longest time. And it finally came out. And the reason it took me so long to do this review is because I had to wait a week to see the movie because it sold out and I didn't want to have to deal with all them jeerings. And the second reason was I do live in a house with people that has not seen the movie yet. And I did not want to record a review that they might overhear and thus spoil something, something for them. So, that's why. But let's do it. Um, first off, if you do not, yeah, if you do not know that about this movie at all, Beauty and the Beast is a remake of the '90s animated Disney film Beauty and the Beast. Um, this is one of those live-action movies that I've been looking forward to since Disney is on this live-action kick. Um, I thought this would be a great movie to do it with, and they delivered. It's a great movie. Um, I was a bit worried about it. A bit worried about the hype, I won't lie to you, but it came through and it was fantastic. So, let's talk about it a little bit. First off, let's talk about the main story of Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast originally is a French story. I cannot remember who made it. I believe if you go into my Disney week, I talked about that a little bit. Um, so, I will maybe put a link to it somewhere, I don't know. But... It starts about a beautiful young girl named Belle and her father. Um, her mother is not in the equation, so... Disney. Disney! And she... Her, they live in a small village in the outskirts of France. And they're a bit of an outcast in this village because they're different than everybody else. And nothing can hurt you more in a small town than being different. Trust me, I live in a small town, I know. Um... So, Belle's different because she's not like women of the age. She's educated. She reads. She tries to teach young women how to be, how to better themselves. And that just ain't flying in this society, madam. And her father, uh, Maurice, is kind of outcast because he's just strange. He's one of those artistic types that, you know, he doesn't think like other people do. He doesn't behave like other people do. It's not wrong, he's just in a different state of mind is all. But again, not in this town, sir! Um, so, one day he's going to take one of his inventions to the local state fair, if you would, the, you know, the local gathering of events and entertainment and whatnot. Anyway, he, he, lo yeah. he loses his way, and he finds the Castle of the Beast. And the Beast has been cursed by an enchantress to, for, to be immortally a beast, unless he can find true love um, by the time the last petal of an enchanted rose falls. And it's kind of on a time loop of about 10 to 11 years. So, um, and his entire household staff is also cursed to be household items. So, anyway, he stumbles upon this castle, is taken prisoner, and that's kind of where the story really begins. So, before I get into more, let's talk about the cast, shall we? First off, you have the starring role Belle, played by Emma Watson. Now, Emma Watson was by far the best choice of this role. I said a long time ago, before there was even sniffings in the air, that this might be something that they might make. I said, you know who'd be a great Belle in a live-action Beauty and the Beast? Emma Watson. Ta-da! I can tell the future. So, she plays the role, the role very well. She has that sarcastic, but not really sarcastic, loving, but a bit distant, you know, beautiful, but, you know, unattainable. She puts off that air very well. So she does very good in that role. The Beast is played by Dan Stevens. 
Now, Dan Stevens, I had never heard of. I don't know anything else he played in, but he did a good job as Beast. I'll tell you that right now. Um, granted, the Beast was very it was completely CGI. Um, they just used him as a bass and his voice. So it's kind of he's kind of like a voice actor in this aspect. But um, they had to see they had to uh, auto tune his voice a little bit deeper for the Beast role. But you can't really tell. It's very very small nitpick stuff I'm going to be talking about in this review because it's a review. I have to. Um, but overall, he did a great job. And they changed a few things about the Beast. Another thing I'm going to talk about in the review is the loopholes that they fixed from the last movie. And one of the big loopholes they fixed was why is the Beast running a castle at the young age of, I don't know, 18 to 24, somewhere in that area? Where did his parents go? Fix that loophole. Um, why can't the Beast read? Fix that loophole. I made him to where he can. He's literate. Thank goodness. That made no sense to me. He's a prince. How is he illiterate? Anyway. <laughs> so, they fix that. Um, what happens exactly when the last petal falls for the Beast in the household? Fix that. Um, yeah, so... They fixed all those loopholes, and like I said, Dan Stevens plays well. Him and Emma Watson worked well together, um, as far as, you know, uh, Belle and the Beast goes. They fed off each other. The two personalities, the Beast and the Belle, are so similar that they're different. I don't know if that made sense to you at all, but they, they clash, but it brings them closer. So, they played that very well. Um, Cogsworth and Lumiere in this were played by Ian McKillen, better known as Gandalf or Magneto, and Ewan McGregor, or known from um, the Star Wars prequels as Obi-Wan Kenobi, or maybe you liked Moulin Rouge, since he does sing in this. He played uh, the main character in Moulin Rouge. can't remember his name right now. But they did phenomenal. It's something special seeing them two work together. I loved it. Um, so... Uh, let's say on to the villain, Gaston. Gaston is played by Luke Evans. And Luke Evans is better known for his roles in the Hobbit um, trilogy. Can't remember his name in there, but you know who I'm talking about. You know. You know that. So, he plays Gaston. And Gaston, they changed a few things about him in this movie. In the original animated movie, he was a bit, he was just a jerk. He, I mean, that's all it was. That's how he was a villain. I mean, his character itself should be the hero, but he was just a jerk about it. And in this one, he is evil. There is no doubt in your mind he is a evil, terrible human being. And his right-hand man, LeFou, is played by Josh Gad, better known for his roles as Olaf in Frozen, or as I know him, Elder Cunningham from the Book of Mormon. When I first heard him sing Gaston, I was like, is that Elder Cunningham from Book of Mormon? I'm a musical theater nerd, so forgive me. But um, they work well together. They changed a few things about LeFou. Um, he isn't as hopelessly devoted to Gaston as he is in the original. He has actually a human brain, apparently. And he questions it when somebody is just a terrible human being. And... You learn a bit more about Gaston's backstory, the fact that he was a captain in the French army during the war. I'm not sure which war, but the war. Um, so yeah, you learn a bit more about them. Um, what makes them tick? The whole stink that was around this movie was the whole LeFou turns out to be gay kind of thing. If I had known about that, I wouldn't have guessed it was a gay moment. I saw three seconds, you could have thought of it as just a comedic relief. Kind of a, <laughs> that was funny kind of moment. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Um, yeah, that's the main cast. You have other mem uh, members of the cast that I could go into, but I usually try to keep these about 10 minutes long. So, we're already at 9.30. And so, the movie itself, though, revolves around the story of Beast trying to get Belle to fall in love with him, to break the curse. And it's kind of hard considering when you when they first meet, he imprisons, and imprisons her into a room. And But the household staff 
eventually get around to, you know, coaxing them together. They kind of learn that they have common interests, common grounds, and it works very well. The music in this movie... Oh, the music in this movie is so good. Um, Alan Menken, who writes a lot of the Disney stuff, did a phenomenal job with this score again. He wrote the original one, and he improved it, I would say. He added songs into this movie that really add to the emotion to it. There's a song that Maurice, Belle's father, sings at the beginning of the movie that will rip your heart out. And it's just, it it adds so much to their characters. Um, like I said, the CGI in this movie is well done. It doesn't pull away. I mean, if you're just one of those people, it's CGI, it's stupid. Then, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. But if you can get past it, if you can just accept it as the art form that it is, and use it to enhance the movie, it does It does just fine. Um, there's a few scenes where the background scenery has been green screened, and you can tell. I mean, it's not blaring, but you can tell. You know what I mean? You ever just look at something and you're like, that's green screened. But like I said, nitpick stuff. Tiny things. Um, overall, watch the movie. I recommend watching it in theaters. I don't often tell people to go to the theaters because movies are expensive. But this is definitely one you want to see in theaters just to get that experience. And also to to support them. To support the Disney Corporation and encourage them to make more uh, good quality live action like this. So, yeah. Um, I'll put more of my Disney related stuff, Beauty and the Beast related stuff up in that corner. And as always, if you like the video, hit that subscribe bubble right up there. Um, let's me know what you like. Also, like, like, like or dislike. You know, whichever you feel. Whatever, whatever you lean towards. And let's me know what you like and don't like. So, anyway, I love all of you. And I'll see you on the next video.